Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Hope you're doing well. Today I want to share with you the process of this small painting of cherry blossoms. So this week I sought to do a small painting of this beautiful scenery. This painting was taken a couple years ago in University of Washington. Every spring, the cherry blossom trees will bloom and it is absolutely beautiful. I haven't got a chance to visit the place this year, but I will always remember how beautiful it is. So when I took this photo a couple years ago, I wanted to paint it, but I didn't know how do I approach this subject because it's pretty precious to me. But this week I thought I would just do a very simple one, almost like if I am there on location doing plein air. So I'm doing a very simple line drawing, despite that there are quite a bit of details on the architectures. I just try to capture the overall shape of the buildings, those rooftops, and leave enough space for the cherry blossom trees. So as you can see, I didn't draw a lot of details onto those buildings, even though they are incredibly complex. I really just want to keep them as big shape. If you kind of squint your eyes while looking at the photo reference, a lot of those details will merge. Plus, you are looking at a smaller version of the photo. A lot of the details are lost, but what remains is the major shape that you see, the middle value shapes. So I pre-wet the paper and I mix the color for the sky. I try to make it a little bit bluer because it is a sunny day. The color should be a little bit more saturated. Plus, after it is dry, the paint will become a little bit more washed out. So you always want to compensate for that, especially when doing wet on too wet. The color will fade off once it's dry. I also mix some warm color and I try to give a little bit of color of light already. And now I'm moving down to the cherry blossom trees. I use a little bit of carmine. It is this beautiful pinkish looking color that is very vibrant. It is a great color for cherry blossom trees. And as I come down to the bottom, it gets a little bit darker. I just added some blue to make it look a little bit more purplish, cool the color down a little bit. At this stage, all we're trying to establish is the color and the atmosphere. So don't worry about any shape. What you want is a nice consistent wash. Now that the first wash is done, while it is still wet, I start to do some wet onto wet, especially with the cherry blossom trees. I don't want to paint every single flower petals. That's just impossible and it's not going to look nice and loose. I just want to make it look like it has some volumes. So some wet onto wet, start to add more middle values. So we got this transition from light to dark and you start to see the sense of lighting and volume. We don't have to paint every single flower, but we want to convey the sense of lushness the sense that the flowers are blooming, it's rich, it's full. It feels comforting when I'm painting this scenery because I was reminded by nature essentially that even though we're going through a very turbulent time right now, there are a lot of things that's going on in this world that really can make us anxious. Some of us feels heartbroken and some of us might even get affected by what's going on in the world physically and it really threatens our safety and things like that but the flower still blooms the season still changes and even though as an artist as an individual i feel very powerless to change anything that's going on in this world i want things to be better but i am just one person it's a very limited thing i can do but when i look at the nature it feels like god's promise that things will pass winter will pass flowers will bloom again 
I took this photo several years ago, and through the pandemic and everything, is still there, and it's still blooming flowers today. So all these thoughts came to me while I was painting, and I think when we are creating, when we are painting, the things around us, the nature around us, there's always that comfort feeling, at least for me, that I feel. I am adding beauty into this world, and I'm also reminded that the beauty is everywhere. There's beauty around me, that's available for me, and comfort me. And as an artist and content creator, all I can do is to share this with you. And I really hope that through this video and through this painting, I can also share a little bit of that peace and comfort. With you. So now I'm painting the middle value, and as you can see, as soon as I put that down, you start to feel the sense of light, and I try to connect all the shape that I can. So the building and the roof, I leave out the light on the rooftop, so that there's sunlight, and this is also the good chance for me to articulate the silhouette. Of all the cherry blossom trees, I don't have to paint individual flower, but with some articulation of the silhouette, you can get the sense of all the flowers on the trees. And while the middle value is still wet, I do some wet onto wet, and I start to hint some details within this middle value shape. And because those wet onto wet are soft shapes. Those lost and found edges can really give people the perception of detail without actually painting all of them. So what I did is I mix a thicker mixture, and I use a smaller brush and use the tip of the brush to do those details. And I also start to lose some hard edges of the cherry blossom trees. Even though it's in separate layers, I still want them to integrate a little bit so that it feels like it belongs to the same scene. And here you can see how amazing it is just by painting a few simple shapes. You can already get the sense of flower blooming's and the building. And even though I didn't paint all that many details, you can still feel the sophistication within that middle value shape. There are some details hidden inside of it, and it's not because I paint them; it's because your mind complete the painting for yourself. Now that it is dry, I start to add just a little bit more detail and add a little bit more dark as well. And as you can see, especially the sky, when I first put it down, it looks pretty vibrant and intense. But now that it is dry, it actually doesn't look all that saturated. So don't be afraid to go a little bit bolder, to go a little bit more intense and saturated. If your mixture is too transparent to start off with, it will likely fade back into almost nothing. So you really want to compensate for that fading. And now that the cherry blossom tree is dry, I rewet. A few part of it, and start to add just a little bit more detail. I want to have a mixture of dry brushing and also wet onto wet, because the volume is there, and I do feel the sense of light in this painting already. But we want to just add a little bit more detail and just add a little bit more depths within that group of flower and cherry blossom trees. I want to have a little bit hint of branches and darks, so the painting will look just a little bit more complete. Because right now we have light value and middle value, and we still lack a little bit of dark value. So this is what I'm trying to do right now. And I start off with some wet onto wet, just starting to paint some dark tree branches. And they don't have to be very defined. A little bit of wet onto wet actually make them feel like they are behind some of the flowers, and it's almost a little bit abstract even. 
that I'm not trying to paint complete branches. They are just visual languages. They are just shapes. So now, as you can see, by adding some darks, even a little bit abstract darks, you can start to feel more depth. What you're looking at right now is sped up version, but in real time, I actually need to sync a little bit before I put down each individual brushstroke. There are a lot of decision makings when it comes to painting. You always want to think about, especially when you're painting details, you always want to think about whether you should paint this shape or not, whether you should leave this out or you should paint this in. Will this additional detail helps your painting or is actually going to make your painting too busy? So I did a quick glaze on the roof because I feel like it is a little bit too light. I want a little bit more separation between the roof and the sky. I'm also adding some more dark for the cast shadow on the building. And also right next to this bright cherry blossoms, if you add a little bit more dark, those flowers will pop out even more. So now after this is dry, I can feel that the roof and the light part of the cherry blossom is kind of competing with each other. I want people to focus on the cherry blossom a little bit more. So I decided to do another glaze on the rooftop. So that it still looks bright. It still looks like there's sun hitting it, but it's not going to be as popped out as the cherry blossom trees. And here is the finished painting. I hope you enjoy this painting and I hope you enjoy this demo. And I truly wish that my painting and my video will bring you a little bit of comfort and joy and peace fulfilling. And I also encourage you to start do some painting for yourself as well. Paint the nature around you and let the nature remind you that you are loved and it is always available for you and the flower will bloom for you to enjoy. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.